Welcome to the Mamba Moments Podcast. My name is Skylar Treppel, and I will be the host of this podcast as I am currently a Master's of Sports Journalism student at the University of Southern California. This podcast will continue to honor and expand the legacy of Kobe Bryant through continuing to tell amazing stories and having guests being interviewed, journalists who knew Kobe, teammates, and fans who he deeply impacted, and so much more. Next week, we have Cabby Richards, one of my favorite Kobe interviewers. But for today, I'm going to share my own Mamba moment of when I flew from my hometown of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, to attend Kobe Bryant's 60-point finale, the last game of his career. Now, I flew out from Winnipeg the day after finishing my business degree, and it was magical. I didn't even know I was going. My parents surprised me with the ticket because I watched all 82 games of Kobe Bryant's final season that year. So I knew all the storylines going into this game, and it just couldn't have been more special, really. I mean, you had Shaquille O'Neal ask Kobe Bryant to score 50 points in his final game after one of Kobe's games that season where, you know, he hadn't played so well. He was 37 at that point. And what did Kobe say to Shaq? Nah, man, only in 2K. I can't do that in real life anymore. So lots of people weren't expecting much, but I knew that Kobe was just setting the expectations a little bit lower. Leading up to that game, Kobe scored 35 points in only two full quarters of playing against the Houston Rockets just a couple of nights earlier. So I knew something special could still happen. And Kobe had quite a few throwback performances during that time period. So I fly out from Winnipeg. I get to LA the day before the game, right after I finish the last exam of my business degree. And I stay in the Holiday Inn downtown. It was just wild when I got out of my hotel the next day. We are talking thousands, thousands of fans in Kobe Bryant gear all together to celebrate the man who meant so, so much to them. It was literally like Disney World for Kobe Bryant. It was like Kobe Land. There were giant inflatable Kobe's. There were massive blocks that were spinning off the ground with pictures of Kobe. There were giant TVs showing Kobe Bryant highlights. There were giant posters of Kobe Bryant on the Staples Center. So you can imagine how high the walls of a basketball arena are. And the whole thing was plastered with Kobe. Kobe's five championship trophies were there. It was literally like a theme park for Kobe and just a full expression of love and everyone there to celebrate Kobe. One of the coolest things was that they actually had a wall where you could write down messages to Kobe that thousands of fans were lining up for. And I did myself. And I told Kobe, you know, I'd watched them since kindergarten, even though I remember him on TV when I was three. But kindergarten was where I really started following Kobe. He was drafted when I was three, by the way. And I said, thank you for inspiring me to love the process every day. And I really meant that, you know, Kobe was all about enjoying the journey on the way to the destination, especially in the latter part of his career. And it was just so cool that everyone from all over the world wrote messages and everyone was down to talk about Kobe. I met so many people that were there from all across the world and all different continents who had flown there just to see their hero who meant so, so much play in his final game. And keep in mind, I knew Kobe had something special in him. Lots of people thought that he was not going to have a phenomenal game because he did have to get massage therapy every single day just to be able to play. He'd had three season-ending injuries. This was not the Kobe who could drop 50 on any night except for this one. So... I get into the arena after waiting about 45 minutes in line to get in. It was the craziest thing that I had ever seen in my entire life. I get in and it is just a sea of purple and gold. It is excitement. It was like a championship game, but it was the last regular season game of the season in which the Lakers went 17 and 65, worst of their career. But what was beautiful was that there was no pressure. 
It was all celebration. It wasn't that nervous energy of a championship where something could go wrong and you're not going to sure what's going to happen. It was pure love, celebration, and excitement. Kobe could have scored five points that night and people would have left being absolutely thrilled. But what happened next was astounding and it was foreshadowed just a little bit. So the lights go off and a huge you know, soft banner comes down from the scoreboard that's white and some of the players actually got caught on the banner and had to go inside of it. And they project this video with this really emotional music. And that's when the moment really hit everybody that you were at Kobe Bryant's final game. You're watching him on the screen or on the banner, I guess, as a 19 year old kid saying he hopes to play 19 or 20 years at the Lakers, which he went on to do, of course. And you're seeing all of his career highlights and the emotions just pour over over everyone. You saw a lot of tears at that point because it really hit everyone that, that this was it. That this was the last time you were going to see Kobe Bryant, a man who some consider the greatest, at least one of the greatest, and you should probably at least have him in your top five, if not your top three, um, on the court. And it was just really, really special. It was this energy in the arena that you could Feel that it was significant, that everyone really, really cared. And then out comes Laker legend Magic Johnson. And he starts talking about Kobe and he calls Kobe the greatest Laker of all time. Now it became cool at some point to disrespect Kobe and to hear Magic, who so many people would say, oh, Magic's the greatest Laker, not Kobe. Call Kobe the greatest Laker was really, really special for people like myself who admire the work ethic and performance of Kobe Bryant just so, so much. And one of the coolest things is that Magic had actually made a mistake in sharing his amazement at Kobe Bryant scoring 50 points 25 times. Up to that point in the regular season, he had only scored 50 points 24 times for number 24, of course. It was like Magic had predicted that by the end of the night, it would be 25 times that Kobe had scored 50 points. And shout out to Gary Vitti, Lakers head athletic trainer who helped kept keep Kobe healthy all of those years. And he was retiring that night as well. So he got his shout out. He was there since 84. So he was there for tons of championships with magic and all of those years, Pau Gasol years, Shaq years, really, really special stuff. So speaking of some of Kobe's teammates, so many were there that night. Shaquille O'Neal was there, the dude who asked Kobe to score 50 points that night, the guy that Kobe scored. Kobe won three championships with in what many consider to be the greatest NBA duo of all time and such an incredible relationship that was tumultuous where Kobe wanted Shaq to work harder and have Kobe's work ethic, but they became great friends in real life. You know, Kobe communicated with Shaquille O'Neal's son on a regular basis and helped train him and they cared about each other's families. And it was really cool how their relationship developed after they had a bit of a breakup. On the front, for me, I was born in 93, so lots of the guys I looked up to in childhood were there. You know, you had Derek Fisher, who won five championships with Kobe. All five championships, Fisher was there with Kobe, only one. You had role players, DJ Mbanga, Roni Turioff, and then, of course, you had Lamar Odom, who was in the hospital, and many thought he was going to die earlier in the year, and, and Kobe went to go see him. So seeing Lamar there, able to stand when people were saying he would never walk or talk again was, was inspirational in and of itself. And he was having a great time watching Kobe. On the cultural aspect, you had David Beckham, one of the greatest soccer players ever, who was there. And on the music and entertainment aspect, you had Jack Nicholson, classic Lakers fan. But at this point, Jack only shows up if it's a big deal. You had Arsenio Hall there. You had Jeremy Piven there, who said it was like Kobe's bar mitzvah. And that was really cool because at a bar mitzvah, it's like you become a man in the Jewish religion. And there are lots of people there from your past celebrating your life and your achievements. And, and that is exactly what this night was like, which doesn't usually happen in sports. Sports is live. Sports is happening fast. So we usually don't get the chance to just stop and appreciate, which is what we thought this would be, just appreciating Kobe. No one, I mean, I was expecting a little bit. I'll get into that. But so many people weren't expecting 
Kobe to put on a performance quite like this. Snoop Dogg was there, one of the biggest Lakers fans who loved Kobe. Jay-Z was there, who Kobe admired and memorized rap lyrics to that he'd listened to on the bus back in like 2001 when the Blueprint came out. You had The Weeknd was there with his crazy hair looking so cool. You had Adam Levine there. You had Kanye West there who had just had, you know, a little bit of a breakdown on stage where he called out Jay-Z. And so that's interesting. I'll get into that in a bit because they met up and you had Baron Davis there, really great NBA player who respected Kobe. You just had so much going on. It was so special. It was like a review of my childhood. And I know for many other people, they felt that way as well. Just seeing all these people there, but they were, they were fans like us there to enjoy Kobe. And it was just, really something so special. And so I get into the game and they do these intros and up on the screen, they have all these players giving their respects and tributes to Kobe Bryant. You have Kevin Garnett, you have LeBron James paying tribute to Kobe, Carmelo Anthony, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, Dwayne Wade, Phil Jackson, the coach who coached Kobe to five championships and Michael Jordan to six, Steph Curry, who just won, who was about to win his second MVP that season. And the Warriors were actually breaking a record of winning 73 games in the regular season that night but I knew and so many did Kobe's game was going to be just a little bit more special and uh, it certainly was it it was beyond historic so that was really cool and then after Kobe just received the most love ever it's time to play a game it's time to play a game and Kobe's got to get himself ready with these young teammates to play the Utah Jazz who had luckily just been eliminated from the playoffs so you know a little bit dejected but they still played hard defense on Kobe you'll hear people say oh they let him have 60 points no 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 I was there and they were playing hard defense hand in the face double team on a couple of occasions and Kobe had to hit tough shots so Kobe starts the game and he's just had this outpouring of love and He missed his first five shots because Kobe's human. All the eyes are on him. It's a night fully about him. How does this work? How does this happen? And so he misses five shots. And then Kobe gets a block, a great block right off the backboard, looking like the young Kobe, the defensive monster that he was. And so Kobe gets a block. And from there, he runs down the court and hits a difficult jumper right at the baseline. And he makes the shot. And then... Kobe starts making his pull-up jumpers. Kobe makes a second shot. Kobe makes a third shot. Kobe makes a fourth shot. And then he makes a fifth shot in a row. And the crowd is going wild. Everyone is out of their minds at this point, okay? It was this collective energy where no one wanted to see anyone else shoot. We just wanted to see Kobe. And everybody felt this way. So, When Kobe hit that fifth shot in a row, his teammates are jumping up for joy. Everyone's jumping around. Everyone is standing up. I mean, we're talking the first quarter of a regular season game. This dude gets a standing ovation. It was like a performance. It really felt like a theater play, not a basketball game, especially when the fourth quarter hit. So by the end of the first quarter, Kobe's got 50, 15, sorry, one five, 15 points. And at this point, you know, I've started chatting with people. I made friends. Shout out to my friend, Roger Liao. I met him that night. We still talk today because we shared this bond. Might have to have him on this podcast one time. And I tell him, hey, Kobe's got 15 points. If he keeps up this pace, he could get 60. And Roger was a Kobe believer. Roger loved Kobe more than anyone I've met. Being from Canada, I haven't met a lot of people who love Kobe Bryant in the way that I do. And it was so special to connect with people there and especially Roger. And he laughed when I said that because it was such an unbelievable prospect for Kobe to be scoring 60 points on this night. And anyways, he goes out there. And by the end of the half, he had, I believe, 23 points. So that was great. 23, of course, the number of Michael Jordan. And after that, Kobe goes into the third quarter. But first, at halftime, Kobe is walking around and he goes up to Jay-Z and Kanye. And Jay-Z and Kanye actually had some issues because of what Kanye had said about Jay-Z when he had a little bit of a breakdown on stage, nothing to laugh at mental health, mental health and mental illness is a serious issue, but 
yeah, they had some issues. And Kobe goes up and gets them to start talking. And this was right after. So you knew it was the first time that they had had the chance to talk. And so this was a really, really cool moment. And for me to see as a fan as well, uh, as a fan of their music growing up too, and Baron Davis comes up and it's just all these dudes I looked up to are, are talking on the court and Kobe is playing the last game. And it was just so cool to see time stop in that moment. So as I was saying now, Halftime's over, Kobe's ready to go out in the third. And throughout the whole time, we've had all these celebrities giving video tributes, Justin Bieber, Justin Timberlake, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, David Beckham, soccer player, of course, Alexander Ovechkin, Paul Abdul, Jack Black. I mean, just everyone you could imagine. Kobe touched, Kobe inspired, and it was amazing. So we get into the third quarter and Kobe's doing all right. And he's got 37 points at the end of the third quarter. Things are heating up, but the Lakers were stinking all game. They're not a great team at this point. It's too much young talent, and Kobe's not used to having young talent and being like a mentor, you know. He did as good a job as he could, but Kobe said before, any season without a championship is a wasted season. So you know Kobe wants to compete for a championship, even though he became softer with the media at this point, opened up to them more, and really was enjoying the journey more because that was all there was left to do with the farewell tributes and, and everything going on. The fourth quarter is where the magical Mamba moments began happening. As I said, the crowd was losing their mind this whole time. When Kobe was at the free throw line, the crowd was chanting MVP, MVP as loud as they possibly could. Throughout the whole game, there were chants of Kobe, 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 and thank you, Kobe. Thank you, Kobe. And it was just when he hit a shot, though, people went nuts every single time. When he almost hit a shot, everybody stood up and gasped their breath. It was unlike anything you've ever seen. And it was for a regular season game, but there was no championship expectations. There was nothing on the line. So everyone could just enjoy and embrace this moment together. And it was so, so special. So fourth quarter, Kobe starts going off and the Lakers are down 10. And now Kobe starts hitting shots. He starts hitting layups. Kobe's up to 40. 40 points on his last night. This is the first time Kobe scored 40 points in at least a couple of years since I believe 2014 against the Golden State Warriors. And so Kobe gets the 40 points and then he keeps going. Again, people expect him to score maybe, maybe 20 points tonight. Kobe keeps going. He gets to 51 points this is the first time Kobe Bryant has scored 50 points since 2009, February 2nd, 2009 against the New York Knicks when he was absolutely in his prime on his way to winning championship number four. So Kobe goes out and he gets a 50 piece. Kobe is now hitting shots from everywhere. He's hitting three pointers. He's hitting layups. He's blowing past defenders. He's hitting pull up jumpers, mid range shots, everything you could imagine. He's looking like the Kobe of old. Somehow he finds the strength. He's on pure adrenaline. The dude looks completely exhausted. But who else to leave it all out there but Kobe Bean Bryant? So at this point, the Lakers, as I said, they were down, you know, 96 to 86 to the Utah Jazz. 10 points, three minutes left in the game. You know, Kobe can get a bunch of points, but them winning, it seemed meant to be, but it also seemed ridiculous. But somehow, he keeps going. He keeps going. He keeps scoring. In 2008, I went to go see Kobe Bryant play in Los Angeles. And somehow he scored 53 points. My favorite player. They had a shirt of Kobe's 50-point games that night. I was so lucky to go from Winnipeg, Manitoba in his MVP season. And I couldn't believe that he scored that many points. It was amazing. I never thought I'd see it again. But Kobe Bryant goes up. And he scores 53 points on a mid-range jumper. And I was in disbelief. I'm like, this guy is 37 years old. He was winning MVPs when I saw him. How is he outscoring that performance? How am I here for this? This is incredible. There was an aura. There was a spirit that came over everyone. It was just next level. And so then the Lakers actually have a chance to win the game here. 
Kobe Bryant hits a three-pointer fading away with all of his energy expended and less than a minute left. And the Lakers are now down 96 to 95 and they can win this thing. The whole crowd is up. Watch the video, everyone. You see Jay-Z smiling. You see Kanye smiling. You see Shaquille O'Neal smiling. You see Snoop Dogg smiling. Everyone was turned into little kids. Kobe turned all of us into little kids. He could turn the biggest stars into little kids, and it was just amazing. So then Kobe's dribbling the ball up the floor. Lakers down by one. We've seen this time and time again, but not at this age, not in this moment, not in his last game. And Kobe takes the ball up and Julius Randle comes up to the top and sets a screen for Kobe. Kobe dribbles around the screen. He goes for the pull up jumper with 31.6 seconds left and he shoots and the ball goes in. Everyone is out of their minds. Kobe has 58 points. This is crazy. The Lakers are actually looking to win this thing. And then Kobe gets fouled and he's at the free throw line for the last time of his career. And everyone's chanting MVP. I have a video holding my phone and I'm shaking. I'm shaking. Everyone is shaking. The whole arena, you can feel the tension at this point because Kobe can go for 60. He can go out with 60, the oldest player to ever score 60, the most ever by an NBA player in their last game. And he hits the first free throw. And I go, come on, come on. My voice is shaking on the video. And somehow, some way, Kobe Bryant hits the last shot of his career. MVP, MVP. Everyone's chanting. Everyone loses their mind. The ball swishes through the net. Kobe Bryant has scored 60 points in his final game. The crowd has lost their minds. This is next level, unlike anything that you will ever see in your lifetime. Everyone knew how special this was. Everyone is elated. The biggest stars are elated. Everyone is just feeling the love at this point. It was just so many people showing love for another person in a great mood. And Kobe celebrating with his teammates. His teammates are blown away. You can tell Kobe can barely breathe. He's left it all out there so much. Final play of his career, Kobe throws a pass to Jordan Clarkson. Kobe gets his standing ovation, leaving the court. Kobe Bryant comes back out after the game with fans teary-eyed, enjoy just every emotion you can imagine. And he gives his iconic speech. And he thanks the crowd. And he thanks the fans for standing there with him and always supporting him and being there that night and watching at home, making it through the ups and downs that Kobe made it through. And I love the line he said, it's not the, the championships that I'm most proud of, it's the down years because we didn't run, we didn't run. And that was so Kobe. And another moment I'll share is Kobe got on the mic and when he said, man, that was the first word he said, the whole crowd started cheering because we'd watch this guy grow up from being a kid. You know, I'm, I was 23 at the time and I've watched Kobe since he was 18 years old and we watched him grow up and he had this growl of an exhausted man who was now a father and you could just feel the years of experience and giving himself to the game. And Kobe said always, you know, leaving no stone unturned and it was just magical. It was truly magical. So then end of the speech. Kobe looks at his daughters and he looks at his wife and thanks them for making the sacrifices of letting him go to the gym and letting him do the work. And it was just amazing. It was really amazing. And, and a lot to look back on now, of course, but his family being there and the love he had for them, you could see it, you could feel it. His teammate Shaquille O'Neal, everyone behind him, Kobe celebrating with them, Shaquille O'Neal in awe. And then Kobe at the mic after an epic speech dropping 60 points, goes up and says, Mamba, and drops the mic. Ladies and gentlemen, confetti starts raining down from the ceiling 24 shaped confetti and everyone is just watching everyone is in bliss everyone is in joy everyone is talking with each other there was one guy in the front row who was laughing a little bit at how excited i was at the start of the game by the end he turned around and gave me a high five i was so excited 
I went amongst Kobe fans. I, I was the biggest there, you know, everyone was turning around and high-fiving me by the end. And I was helping people stand up with just my energy and my joy and yelling. I couldn't contain it. It was amazing. I can't believe I was there for this. I can't believe I'm reflecting on it. My favorite player. And it's a memory that will always stick with me even more now that the late great Kobe Bryant has passed away, but the legacy will live on forever. And I will be a part of keeping up that legacy. I would Google Kobe every day day just to and press news just to look at Kobe stories and so I want to keep hearing those Kobe stories and that's why if you want to come on the podcast please reach out to me Instagram at Skylar Treppel Twitter at Skylar Treppel Facebook you can find me under my name LinkedIn and I'm currently at USC and this is the Mamba Moments podcast so I want people to come on and share Mamba Moments thank you all so much Please tune in next week as we have Cabby Richards, who did these amazing interviews with Kobe, where you get Kobe to open up in the 2006, 2007 era when Kobe was stone faced. He was a killer. So before, you know, he opened up in 2016, this dude would bring pillows, ask Kobe if he could stay at his house. And Kobe was cool with it. This guy got some of my favorite Kobe interviews, Cabby Richards. So tune in next week for another episode of Mamba Moments. And if you're passionate about Kobe, you're a teammate, you're a fan, you're a journalist, come on down. We'll do interviews we'll share stories because i love talking about kobe and i want to keep hearing those stories and for my master's thesis at usc i'm talking about kobe and his final season and final game since i watched the final game and watched his final season went to the final game so I want to get some interviews done. And while I was interviewing people, interviewed some of Kobe's teammates and journalists who covered him, that was when I realized people find a lot of catharsis in talking about Kobe Bryant now. And I've always loved talking about Kobe Bryant, always. So I want to keep doing it and I want to keep the legacy alive and keep moving it forward and just have a lot of fun doing this and raise some funds as well for the Mamba and Mamba Sita Foundation. You can donate at Mamba and Mambasita.org if you guys please. So I'm just going to promote that all the time in the outro. So thank you so much for tuning in to the Mamba Moments podcast. Subscribe to whatever podcast service you like. I'll be up on Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and a bunch of different services. And please continue to tune in to the Mamba Moments podcast. Mamba forever, Mamba out.